Welcome to Mind Over Matter, where we feature young Jamaicans who are shooting for the stars. I'm your host, Margaret Boyne. Remember, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do and hit that notification bell. My guest at 22 years old wears multiple hats. Her passion for the arts, which began in high school, has led her to embrace the spotlight, not only as a lead actress in the drama series Baller, but also one of the hosts of the television show Gen Z. She's also a poet, content creator, and filmmaker who has won several awards over the years. We explore her multifaceted career and the factors for her success. My guest is Deandra Harrison. Welcome to Mind Over Matter. Deandra? Thank you so much for having me on. And it's great having you. So you're an actress, a poet, content creator, host, filmmaker. I don't know. Is there anything that you don't do as a creative danger? Why? I can't draw. I'm not a drawer. <laughs> a painter, an artist. I can't draw. I will try, but the most I can do is like two little stick man. <laughs> <laughs> so how and when did this passion for the art start? Well, definitely in high school. Uh, I feel like it was more of grade probably nine, but definitely in high school. For sure, mm. yeah. So how you started out? You started writing poems? Or how you started? Yeah, I started. So here's the thing. I feel like most creatives in Jamaica, they go through the JCDC stage. Mm. I thoroughly went through the JCDC stage and oh. I felt like that kind of pushed me. Because, you know, I feel like it's very motivating when you join JCDC. I get a gold medal. I can do something with my life, right? Mm. And so I started writing a lot of original poems to perform at JCDC to the point where other persons started to ask me to, to, to write poems for them. Oh. So it really started at JCDC doing drama, writing poems. And from that, I just kind of explore all of my creative potential. So anything with creative, I just try it and see if I can do it. So how many, th um, how many awards do you think you have won over the years at JCDC? Boy, honestly, <laughs> I don't remember. It's been a lot. I cannot remember. Well, it's a lot, I though. Can't remember. It's a lot. I feel like it's a lot. Yeah. Uh, do you, you remember the first piece that you wrote? That you ever written? That I wrote? Yeah. Wow. Hey, I couldn't have a memory now. <laughs> um, I think it was a dub. I don't remember the name of the dub, but I do believe that it was a dub. Mm. Yeah, I think it was a dub. Yeah. Okay. You went to Arden. Tell me a little about Arden, your time there. Oh my gosh. Listen, <laughs> if my talk about Arden, we're not gonna come after me. <laughs> I love Arden. Um you know, I mean everybody when you think about the relationship that, that, that they have with the school is it's kind of bittersweet because there's some good moments and there's some bad moments. But for sure, majority of my high school life was cool. And I will forever be grateful for Arden. Because of Arden, I feel like leaving high school going into college i'm so multifaceted because right now at ue i can you know stretch my creativity in different places and arden teaches you that arden will build on your creative bone mm -hmm. and that's for sure what it did for me and i'm forever grateful um for the opportunities that i got even after leaving high school um i was able to build on my creativity take part in a lot of clubs the teachers were supporting me i remember a lot of times when mahaval um i should be in class but they had jcbc up in the <laughs> room listen i'm not saying anybody should do that you know but i'm saying that arden did build on my creative bone and i will forever be grateful for that mm -hmm. but you're not you're not only did um, this creative thing there, but you you excel academically. Talk about that. Me hear the same yes. that one holy passes and all of that. Yes. So um, you hear something get whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so let me explain. So um, I I think there I when I was in grade eleven, yes, I I did nine subjects. Um, the extra subject that I did was actually theatre arts. That's so much we love drama. Mm -hmm. yeah, I studied, right? Mm -hmm. I got all of my nine subjects and I went on to Cape. I got all of my Cape subjects. I know I'm at UE. Thankfully, I was able to join a competition that fully funded um my UE experience right now. It was a top the poem competition where basically you're supposed to perform a poem, but it's just showing your face and using your face and your voice. So there are no hands involved and full of performance, it's just face and voice. And because of that, Big up God, I was able to um, get a scholarship to study currently at UE. And my grades are up because 
you have to maintain a certain GPA to um to keep the scholarship. So I'm really grateful for that as well. Okay, that's great. So yeah. did did you find that persons were saying that you have so much subject hunting the way you've gone in and no 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 acting and all them something they get a real job here for <laughs> yeah, actually they, they i never i never get all of that no oh, but mother here we hope she's not here but me tell her they could see it right <laughs> so when i started this whole acting thing my mother she she was there but i don't think she saw it as a legitimate thing mm. so she was there she, she never really came to any of her performances she was in fact i would say motivating towards what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. You know, when she actually starts support me and when I do, when she actually says to me, I make a little money. <laughs> and she said, okay, 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 I make a little money from this. Full support. No, my mother, my number one teacher, that she did everything she want to do. After this, she had to ask me, where is it being released? Where can I watch it? <laughs> Once she says, I make a little something in my pocket. So she support me. And to be honest, I don't really blame her because when you even look at how she grew up, I can mm-hmm. understand why she's that practical yes. thinker. Like, yeah. what if you're, you're doing this, but oh, you can't make some money at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. How can you take care of yourself? You get me, mm-hmm. sir? So I, can, I don't really blame her. I can understand why she is who she is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you're also into filmmaking. I mean, um, at your age, how how that come about? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Filmmaking. Okay. So I joined the JCDC. So far, I have two films under my belt. I tell you the honest truth, they want some improvement, but at the end of the day, it's just a learning opportunity for me. Mm-hmm. And I'm the type of person who just I got always try things. Mm-hmm. So I joined the JCDC short film, film film competition. Um, I think it was in 20, 2020 and also in 2021 or 22. I don't remember, but it was two years. And those are the two films that I made. One of it was entitled Scammed. And I just used person that I knew from the drama club at the time to just come in it to, to kind of bring my vision to life. Um, and the other one was entitled The Guru, mm-hmm. right? As I said, just getting persons from the drama club to bring my vision to life. I did not win the competition, but I got best um, best child filmmaker, best mm-hmm. young filmmaker or something like that. And that was really a push for me. I haven't made a film in a while. I think the last film I made was back in 2022, like early 2022. But yeah, man, I should really go more in filmmaking because... Filmmaking in terms of those are the two films that I have under my belt, but I'm always behind the scenes for a lot of films. Mm. So that's how I was even able to make my own film. I'm, for example, somebody I have a friend, they're making a film. They're like, "Oh, Danger, come and be a PA. I'm gonna come and learn because I still have a lot to learn in that in that field. I come and I learn. I kind of watch how everything work, look at the way they do the shots, listen to the dialogue, and just learn for myself and apply that in whatever way that I can. What were some of the challenges that you had as a filmmaker? Oh, why? I tell you something. No, 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 no. I guess money. Money. No. <laughs> Listen, you see that word money? That was the major challenge. At the end of the day, a lot of persons probably say, oh, you can make one film and not have a budget. I don't, if you want to make one film with sense, you have to have a budget. Yeah. You have to have a budget. I'm going to tell you, say, I will get sponsors. Mm. Even if you don't have the money, go out and get sponsors, but a budget has to be attached. Because at the end of the day, for example, I, I had to pay the videographer and the editor. Um, so, you know, media for get my money to get and pay the videographer and the editor. And even though I, I did not pay the actors, when they come on set, I have to ensure that they have something to eat. I have to ensure that, you know, they're well taken care of in terms of transportation. If they have issues with getting to the location, I have to sort that out. So budget was a major issue for me. Um, other than budget, I believe that time, time was an issue for me as well. Because the videographer, like, I'd, I'd probably only book him to film the, sh- the shoot in one day. And mm. I realized I had to cram everything. Because if mm. I wanted for another day, that's an additional cost. So budget and um and, and time, I'd say, were two of my major issues. You want a scholarship for one of, one of your films? To Edna Manley? Oh, oh, okay. Well, yes, yes, I did. But it wasn't really a film. It was like a reel. A film okay. is more landscape. Yeah, it was like a video reel. That's that's oh, more of my content creator side. So like I do a lot of funny videos and content creator. So Red Stripe had this competition where they wanted us to make this video talking about um drinking responsibly. And so I made a nice little, it was a portrait video, long way like this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I made a nice little video 
um, about drinking responsibly. I think it should be on their page. I don't remember. It should be there somewhere. And because of that, I, I won. And I, I felt like it was God's, it was really an opportunity from God when I think about it. Um, I won $200,000 from them. And I also won a scholarship to Enamani College where I could, where I got the opportunity to study um, an associate's degree in anything that I choose. Mm, I, see, yeah. I, I don't use a scholarship yet, but I tell myself some problem for a gateway because I'm I'm actually pursuing um a, a bachelor's right now. Mm. So I was thinking about it and I was like, it'd be kind of funny for me to go ahead and do an associate's when I'm doing a bachelor's right now. You get me? Mm. But um I think really and truly, even even the way I won that competition, I feel like it was just divine intervention. Mm. At the time, my, my, my laptop, I had a it mash up, I had a major issue with, with devices and school was about to start back. Um, exams were coming up and I, I did not have a laptop and my mother could not afford to get it back and so when I got the cash I was like then a Jesus this and I was able to get my laptop so that's what could I go through the exam season mm -hmm. and yeah that little period that I went through so my, my laptop did mash up for a while and I joined that competition I got the money and I was able to purchase myself a good laptop right and however what happened is that I went through the entire exam season without a laptop I got the laptop, however, the phones came through after the exam season was done. Still grateful for the laptop and everything. But then, what's crazy about that entire story is that at the end of it all, that was the first time ever in college I made it on the dean's list. And I was just like, it, it has to be God. Like, it put me through so much challenges. Like, if you're a college student, you know what it feels like to, to literally have an exam coming up and don't have your laptop. I don't, I don't take a lot of notes in class. Not saying anybody should follow me. <laughs> However, a lot of times I read from the textbook itself. That's how I study. So mm -hmm. I study from my laptop. I don't study from writing on things. I study from my laptop because it's a technological era. And I use the highlight little thingy. I highlight all of my notes. And that's how I study. So for kind of go through the entire exam season without a laptop and still come out and still be on the dean's list and then end up getting the laptop after that must be jesus me after big up my god but yeah. I, you, you mentioned god talk about your, your faith a little oh so i'm, I'm, a, I'm a christian i'm okay. a christian for sure no listen to me the way society is whenever you tell people you're a christian they expect this pristine perfect <laughs> flawless human being i am nowhere close to pristine perfect or flawless right However, I'm a Christian. I love the Lord, and I'm just trying every day. But try, I try to every day to develop a a personal relationship with God. So even though I sin, I talk to God. Like I'm a reason with Him, I said, God, da, 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 I want. I, I'm trying to get to know God for myself, you know, and not to what the world I say, but just knowing Him for myself. I'm not perfect, but I get to know God for myself. I'm trying. I love that, man. I love that. You're also the host on one of the hosts on Gen Z. Yes. That's a, that's a program on TVJ. Tell us a little about that. Uh, uh, the host on Gen Z? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So, first of all, um, okay, let me not go into the, the beginning part of how we get the opportunity because that's a whole lot of miracle as well. But um, it, it, it's a lovely opportunity. I get to host the, the, the program with Jevon Gordon. Justine Isaacs, Daniel Mullins, and Chad Ratchery. I absolutely love it. The vibe is immaculate. I mm. promise you, when I'm on set with these people, I don't want tomorrow to come. It's so amazing <laughs> um, having conversations with them, especially when we're hosting. We discuss a lot of topics concerning youth, and I love young people because mm. they're man who believes that they're the future. And it's just, it's just amazing being there, and it's a lovely opportunity because one of the things that I'm trying to build up for myself is to sort of make a mark in the media industry. Mm. And, and I, so, so I feel like Gen Z is a lovely opportunity for me to start that, mm. right? I'm, I'm new, I'm fresh, new kid on the block in this little media thing. And I'm trying to like think something like Gen Z kind of exercise the little media bone there. And I can hopefully go into other things from that. Mm -hmm. mm. Your, your role on Baller, how did that come about? Whoa, so I got the role from Baller from actual high school. Oh, yeah, so it was from high school. I think I was in grade 12. I think I was in grade 12 mm. at the time. Um, so as I said, I was a part of the drama club. I was a very active member, extremely active. We do everything. Like, oh, God, man. Me is like the person, whenever I think of performance, me at the right hand, 
and like it's my name come up in their mind like i was just very like people i was known for being somebody that was my identification while at high school yeah man the girl that she in a drama club <laughs> nothing else <laughs> i'm the drama club girl that um so anyway the, the fabian who is the owner of barracks entertainment at the time he wanted some persons for like a series i never knew that baller would blow up so big to be completely honest mm. at the time he was looking for some actors to play um, a role in this whole series called Bala and everything. And he contacted the drama teacher at the time because he's a really close friend to her. And then she suggested me at the time. The six said, oh, one little... But I was really happy for the opportunity because Barks Entertainment, prior to having Bala there, they were doing a lot of plays. So they said, mm, outside, right. but get to work with, with, with Barks Entertainment. They'll go do whatever I do. I, even though it was filmed, it was a film, I was still excited because I love acting. So I said, yeah, man, and it was good to get an opportunity outside of high school. You know, so I'm like, okay, we we'll need this now. And specifically, honestly, I didn't think so. it was just going to be like a YouTube something and each week we'll get like a like 500 or 1,000 right. <laughs> The moment of you. <laughs> I said, wow, like it has done a lot for me. I'm forever grateful, man. Yeah, and it has been going on for a, a, a few years now. Yeah, man. Um, from 2020, um, great, as I said, grade 12. So mm, from 2021, yeah. I think, yeah. But tell, yeah, tell me about, about your character that you play. Ooh, so the name of my character is Tessie, Tessie and Brenda Gas, but everybody calls me Tessie. Um, and she's a Christian girl, but not just any Christian girl. It's one of those Christian girls who struggle. She mm -hmm. has a, her friend, her friend groups, the, the friend group that she's in, you realize that there are a lot of negative influences, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So one person, for example, her best friend Kiki, Raga Taga Laga Daga, the lady just... She's very vivacious, but she also mixed up in a certain little thing. And I just wanted a bad girl there at school. Mm -hmm. So imagine for like a Christian Tessie. I could be working with her like a Kiki. And I feel like one of the, the most interesting things about my character, Tessie, is that it shows how much a young Christian can struggle in today's society. Because at the end of the day, there are a lot of things happening in the world. Young Christians, they can go to school. They can be swayed. There are lots of different influences. Mm. Don't tell her best friend is a sway, mm. right? And that's one of the major things that I love about um, Tessie's character. Because what she does, she she embodies Christian struggle. Mm. You get me? And her mother is very hard on her. And when she goes to school, it's very hard to time to just relax and be herself on our friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's Tessie. Mm -hmm. So how you, how you separate your personal life from your character? Oh, boy, to be very honest, I, I, I can do it. Mm -hmm. However, I promise you, if me and you must go somewhere together, miss, I promise you, everybody would have said me, Tessie, Tessie. <laughs> you would think that my name is not Danger and it is Tessie. Because these people, them fully believe they're Tessie behave. <laughs> right? However, in terms of how um, I, I differentiate myself from my character, there are a lot of similarities for sure because as I said earlier, right, I'm a Christ you're a Christian, a Christian yeah. as well. Mm. Yeah, but th there's this divide. I don't think I'm as easily swayed as Tessie mm. is. I'm I'm 22, minus I'm old, but I feel like I've gone through my phases already back in high school where I was easily influenced to the point where I'm not that easily influenced. Mm. To the point where I'm not that easily influenced again. Mm -hmm. So that's the, the one divide between me and Tessie. But I, I don't think I've ever been through a phase where I feel like said me and I are the same thing. We're similar, but we're not the same. So how you handle all the attention that you have been getting? Because everybody know, you know, everybody know uh, your not, not Everybody, road. not everybody, but <laughs> a lot of young people. It's getting there. Um, <laughs> so honestly, I'm I'm trying to channel that attention, right? Um, one of the major things that I'll forever be grateful to Barks Entertainment for is the opportunity to put me out there. Mm -hmm. And as I said, one of my goals in this life is to make um indelible mark in the media industry mm -hmm. and so when people know you and you're a familiar face it helps you in media mm -hmm. people literally say yeah man we'll work with her because yes you have talent mm -hmm. but another perk them noir mm -hmm. so once you go up on the stage people are going to recognize her you get me right and so i'm grateful for that attention i'm also looking into a bit of um social impacting mm. meaning sort of helping our young people i'm working on a little project now i'm going to partner with um some i'm going to partner with a company where i can look into social impacting i feel like it's easier for me to make that switch in terms of motivating our young people for the better right mm. because i already have the attention so in terms of what i do and how i'm dealing with this attention i'm trying to turn the attention into something good because at the end of the day 
I don't want when ball are done, there is no danger. Mm. You have to be smart. Mm-hmm. What is your brand? Your brand can't just be Tessie. Mm-hmm. Who are you? When people come to my page, they're supposed to be like, oh, she's Tessie, but she's also this and she's also that. So I'm trying to channel that attention and create a brand for myself. So a lot of persons know you. So when you go out now, you you have to dress up, you have to look a certain way. No, my, my mother gave me, my, at first, at first I used to can put on one little jacket and one t-shirt for supermarket. <laughs> My mother, my mother gave me a talk. At, at, at <laughs> first, I never did care. I still never cared. At, yeah. at first, when I started getting that attention. But my mother was like, danger. You can't <laughs> continue. It was my mother who kind of said, no, man, you need to start. Because people know you know. So you need to start yeah. with yourself together. <laughs> so yeah, for sure, me definitely have to put myself together. <laughs> so recently, I saw you filling in on a Dotty Berry show. And I must say that, boy, you were you were a great addition. I I, I enjoyed it thoroughly, <laughs> especially that episode when you went to the build, bodybuilding, the bodybuilding oh. competition. <laughs> I think it was priceless seeing your face on on that episode. You see, mm-hmm. as if you enjoyed it though, you enjoyed it. I did. I did, I, did, I did for sure. For sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was a good experience. And I feel like what really made me enjoy it the most was that it was just out of sheer curiosity. Mm-hmm. Like I was actually curious to know how these bodybuilders keep up this shape, go on stage, <laughs> perform the stretches. Like I was just new to this whole bodybuilding industry and I, was, I just wanted to find out everything. You're a creative. Sometimes you have to handle, learn how to handle rejection. How have you been able to do that? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, I feel like definitely in terms of rejection. So because I'm a very spiritual person, mm-hmm. I usually just tell myself whenever an opportunity does not come through, or whenever uh, an opportunity falls through and it just and it does not turn out the way that I want it to, I usually just tell myself that okay, maybe this was just not God's divine intervention. Right. Maybe this is just not what he wants for me right now. Mm-hmm. And that's that honestly is the best way to cope with, with any form of rejection, to be completely honest. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you have learned to trust God and leave mm-hmm. it to God's timing. Yes. So with these many hats that you wear now, which one you find more satisfying? Whoa, 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 whoa. More fulfilling to you. I'd definitely say acting. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, I'd say acting. Um, I always said that acting is my first love. And it was having been heavily involved in, apti- in acting, sorry, that sort of launched me into every other thing that I'm doing. So mm. I started with drama and springing off of that, I ventured into different things. So if mm. I should ever come back to say which one is the most fulfilling, I definitely say acting. Who who are, who was been some of your aspir- inspirations in the acting field whoa whoa listen a man okay so for sure the first person that came to my mind when I asked my question is Delia Harris and let me tell you why Delia reminds me a lot of myself um Delia Harris she doesn't only stick to acting she does other things she's she's writing she's producing right now she has a a series right now on TVJ I'm not quite remembering the name of it right now, but she does that as well. She She's just an all-around creative. Mm-hmm. And that's where I'm trying to get. She's even doing her thing in media. She was one of the hosts on Smile um, Jamaica Morning Time at, at one point, right? And that's one of the reasons why I love Delia Harris. Because when you hear the name Delia Harris, it's not just actor. Mm-hmm. It's actor, writer, producer, presenter. Right. And so that's one of the reasons why she's my favorite actress, mm. because she's she's just all around talented. Mm. So it's not just acting. She does a lot of things. With so with all the different things that you do, though, how do you balance Yui? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, whenever people ask me this question, <laughs> I don't know how to answer it. I just make it work. I just make right. it work. Here's the thing. Ever since I've known myself and I feel like Arden has a lot to do with this, I, I was very involved at Arden. I'm now at UWE. I'm very involved with things doing outside of UWE and also somewhat in UWE as well. Mm-hmm. Right? I just make it work. I know that at the end of the day, I'm at college because we want a degree. Mm-hmm. And in terms of quote-unquote balancing, 
one of the major things when it comes to balancing things is having a hierarchy in your life. Mm -hmm. So you know for sure that you have to get the degree. So a lot of times what will happen is that I may have to not go somewhere or I may have to cancel something or not do something because I have an assignment due mm -hmm. and the assignment comes first. Or I prioritize the time for the assignment because I know that it's due on the same way I have somewhere to be. So I get the assignment out of the way first. Mm. Right? So I feel like whenever I get asked this question, the quote-unquote balancing part of it is just knowing your priorities. Mm. And I understand that I want the degree. So right now, my first priority would be school. Everything else, it's very important as well, but it's just another tier lower. What are some of the factors that has contributed to your success so far? Um, factors that have okay, for sure. I, I would say I would say um the relationship that I have with God. Mm. Yeah, God for sure. Um for every major achievement I have in my life. When I when I tell you the story behind it, you will just see that it is God. Mm. For every single major achievement, anything right now you ask me about any major thing that you know of that I have achieved, if I should tell you the story about it, God was like in the center of it. Mm. Him did give me the favor of it work out, mm. right? So I would definitely say God. I would also say it it's it it's it's also somewhat my my the the vision that I have for myself right i i see myself being someone i i don't just want to walk through this earth i want to make a mark i want to impact lives i want to serve people i just want to be remembered mm -hmm. so i feel like another thing is is the vision that i have for myself and the final thing i'd say genuinely just my personality let like me i'm one of them persons there when we're just involved in everything and i'm gonna stretch mm -hmm. myself mm -hmm. i'm i'm gonna do once i can do it and I have the time to do it, I'm going to do it. I'm going to show up. My face are gonna everywhere. Yeah. I'm trying to do the theater thing in the theater industry. Mega there ever play once I can make it. <laughs> right? <laughs> more in the media, mega see if we can we can knock by every media door and just mm. make my presence there so that I can experience it so that I can learn. Mm. So yeah, for sure, those mm. things. All right. So do you have any upcoming projects that we can probably look out for? Wow, upcoming projects. Um, so Gen Z season three is oh. a go, so that's coming up as well. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you saw the ad, but the ads are going yes, out. I have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Gen Z season three is coming. Um another thing that I have coming up right now, I would say I'm gonna be in a play soon. Mm -hmm. Stage play. I can't really talk much about it because mm -hmm. we're, we're still somewhat in the kind of getting ready process because right. we haven't even started rehearsing that much okay. but it's a play that you should look up for probably a few months down the line from mm -hmm. now i wanted to venture a bit in social impacting mm -hmm. right in terms of the attention that i'm getting i want to impact our young people mm -hmm. I, I i want to push them for the better so i'm i'm starting something for myself it's a personal project where i will be using performing arts for so to spark social change so i'll be using mm -hmm. performing arts to kind of uplift a lot of students um, using performing arts to kind of change their mind or shift their mindset as it relates to certain things like abuse or okay. drug use and those things. So mm -hmm. I'll be using performing arts to do that. So yeah. Oh, so you'll be yeah. highlighting some social issues. Okay. All right. Yeah. Congrats on that, man. And <laughs> I just you. want to say before you leave, though, yes, could you leave a bit of advice for someone who want to to pursue a career in 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 the arts okay Give a message for them <laughs> um honestly here's what i would say because i can give this advice but it would mostly be for people who because at the end of the day we're we're all called to something mm -hmm. right and if you know for sure that this is something that you're called to continue trying continue pushing continue exerting effort However, if you're not sure, but you're just merely interested in the arts, or you're just in a little hazy state, but this is something that sparks you, I would definitely say that one thing that you need to do is to just show up. Mm -hmm. And when I say show up, it's tell yourself that you're already there, meaning you're already in the industry. You have to be present, right? A lot of times you say we want to be actors, mm -hmm. but you've never watched a stage play. Mm -hmm. You've never been in a theater. 
You yes. never watch one play. Yeah, you, uh, the only acting you see a little um um Netflix Hollywood mm-hmm. acting. Right. There, 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 there is an acting industry here in Jamaica. Mm-hmm. Start small. Yeah, you want to go Hollywood, but start with Jamaica. Right. So be present. If you want to be a, a painter, start associating yourself with painters. Something that I do a lot. And I, I and I would say this to any other young person who wants to get in the arts. Whenever I see somebody on Instagram or on any social media platform who is currently making a mark in the industry that I am in or I want to get into, I'm going to follow them. I'm going to keep up with their work and I'm possibly even going to reach out to them. Right? It's making yourself present. It's putting yourself there. And eventually when you start, you start, you start find that you, you're, you're pushing yourself in this industry. Eventually you're going to be there. Eventually people are going to see you and be like, Hey, me see the girl here the other day, you know. Me can ask you for come do this for me. Can ask you come do that. And that's how you're going to make your way up. So to kind of summarize everything I just said, <laughs> be present, push yourself in the industry to associate yourself and surround yourself with people who are already in the industry and you will make it as well. Well, it was great talking to you, Dendra. I really enjoyed this conversation. And Same. I just want to wish you all the best with whatever you do and I'll be watching. Yes. <laughs> it was lovely. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And thank all you for right. having me.